Okay. Um, Judy already extended some thank yous, but I just want to reiterate that Joanne really makes the whole registration process possible. We had 110 about more or less people participating today. And that requires a lot of organization and the organization responsibilities and everything else also go to the other team leaders, Eric and Steve McMasters, Mike Bush, who's new to our, our team CBC, but is already in place for next year, right? I've got a spot for you. <laughs> Ever seen how I turned my stuff in? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll help you through it. Ah. And Steve Tillman. Tillman. All right. Sorry. Uh oh. I think uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, it just needs to be tightened up. I'll, I'll fix it. Thank you. This is Zoom command. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, so our count circle here has been going on since 1948. And back in 1948, there were two counters, <laughs> Bessie and Howard Cogswell. And they were out doing the, the whole count circle, which I don't think was well-defined at that time, but it's approximately what it is now. And they got 105 species, I think. I went back to the original write-up, which was in a, a American birds. So it used to be all like paper copies, right? And the checklists, which we still kind of, we still do the checklist trifold dealio and that's great. It doesn't require any batteries, which is good, <laughs> but we're slowly moving towards uh, eBird uh, to submit our lists. And uh, a lot of people submitted eBird lists this afternoon and I've been uh, aggregating those lists on a trip report that's part of the eBird app. And I see, here we've had 91 checklists submitted today so far, and we have 158 species that were recorded on those checklists. Now, some people um, recorded their observations on the paper list. We haven't incorporated all that information yet. We will, usually it takes a long time to do that. Not a long time, but weeks anyway, to verify the information and, and compile it. So. I'll be primarily doing that, but also with help from the rest of the CBC team. So um, we're looking, for, looking forward to the number of species that we see, but that's not always, not always the most important part, obviously, of the Christmas bird count. It's a long-term data set. It goes back 124 years. And so the, the length of that data set is really important from a trends distribution uh, perspective, keeping tabs on how different species are either increasing or decreasing over time. And uh, there's a lot of information there. And it's very, very useful, the long-term information. Of course, now eBird, it's almost like having a Christmas count every day because there's like so many people that are out, but it's not within the same, the same kind of methods. And, and this is particularly in the winter time. So uh, that CBC information is, is valuable and it's been used and a lot of research papers. And uh, so we're contributing to that. So we're the community scientists. You're all part, we're all taking part in that. Uh, let's see here. Um, well, we skipped the rain today. It was supposed to rain like tomorrow or the next day, right? Early forecast called for rain. So, so that was good. Uh, off until Monday. Off until Monday, okay. Mm -hmm. So we can That's go out again tomorrow. We can bird again tomorrow. That's what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you can bird in the rain. It's not very fun, but we've all done it probably. Uh, so let me um, share the screen here. Might need some, let's see if this, oops, here. Share screen. Oops. No, uh, share screen, and then here, tap. You just select the window, and then lower right, where, uh, here. Oh, a lot of here, sorry. Uh, it's not a touch screen though, you have to do it right here, little mouse, <laughs> right here. 
It's a square when he gets paid by God. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and let me let me just uh, get rid of. Pardon the interruption. Sorry about that. We could have used like three extra people on the count today, um, and these guys could have <laughs> filled in. Um, I think that's pretty good. Okay. So the 70th Christmas bird count. I always remember what number it is because that's how old I am. So next year I'll be the 71st. And so I've been doing this for about, I think this is my sixth time. Tom Adell, who's obviously he's like San Luis Obispo County birding. And he had, he was doing the uh, compilation for probably 30 years. I don't know. I mean, a long, long time. So, all right. Tom McDonald. Oh, okay. Well, a long time anyway. So he handed it off to me. So um, I'm glad I'm able to do it. And what we're going to do is, this is like a big field trip, right? And at the end of field trips, you get all together and then you go over the, go over the species list. So that's what we're all going to do together. And I already have a head start, like I said, with the eBird list that we've already compiled. So there's not a lot of suspense. We're going to get over 150 species because we already have 158. But even things that were called in the field today, if they're unusual, like we got a few rare birds for the time or the area, uh, those will be reviewed. And so we don't count those until we do all of, all of the review. And then it'll take a couple of months for me to submit it to National Audubon. And we'll be part of the, there's like 2,000 or more, 2,600 count circles that Audubon has. So like 2000, you know, that includes Canada and the US, but you know, we're like part of like 2000 groups that are doing this kind of the same thing. Some are much smaller and some are even larger. But um, so it, I, when I saw that number, it's like, wow, there's 140 in California about more or less. So, and we have two in our county, we have the Carrizo count as well. And that's gonna be on January 5th. So if you haven't had your fill of CBC, <laughs> then you still have an opportunity to do that. Okay, so let's go to, well, let's just go to the checklist. Oh, I'll show you what this, this, this is last year's trip list of combined um, uh, eBird lists. And at that time we had 80 lists and 180 species. And each of those uh, pins, markers there, show where in the count circle the list was started or originated and where it comes from. So as you can see it's fairly well concentrated all the way from San Luis Obispo to Morro Bay and then that the outlying areas up in the mountains and over where Diablo Canyon is are inaccessible for the most part. So but um, yeah so that's what that looked like and I've got one of those going right here. You can't really see it but <laughs> at home but um, that's that. So um, anyway, we'll go through the list and I'm going to need help from trip leaders and anybody else to chime in. And I'm going to go down the list as it is on the field checklist. And I have the species total there. You can see one so far, and that is Brant, because John Roser does a dedicated count for the Brant. He's, he's been doing Brant research and counts for many, many years. And so he went out yesterday and most of the, well, all the Brant were out on the ocean, not in the bay, out in the ocean because it's hunting season and the Brant are pretty smart. And so when they, they know that they get this diurnal migration going and they go out into the open ocean during the day and then they'll come back over the sand spit at night or just at, at uh, sunset. And it's really pretty cool to watch them come in. You can see these groups and they're just, they're up pretty high. They're, you know, several hundred feet high, maybe a thousand feet high. And you just watch them kind of swirl in and they do the spirals down and then they land in the bay. So he did his count and he came up with 814, which is uh, about, a little bit less than it was a couple of years ago, but 
But this is like a, a graph of our counts, long-term counts. And the orange shows the uh, beginning of 2014, the low point. And that was because the eelgrass in the bay had declined to a point where it was, the, that's their main food source, Brant's main food source. So um, ever since 20, uh, 2014, the counts have been coming up slowly. And um, so we're kind of getting up to more numbers, but even at that, you can see compared to the historical numbers, how low, it's, how low it is. Now this really just reflects our local situation because the population of Brant as a whole, from what I understand, is doing okay up in Alaska and coastwide, but there's not as many stopping in Morro Bay as there, as there used to be. In fact, the high count that I saw from our historical Christmas bird count was in 1951 or 52, and there were 13,000 Brant. Seems like there's hardly even room in the bay for 13,000 brand. So, but that was a good number because it was a couple of um, ornithologists, Peter Peter Pyle and someone else, or maybe his father. But anyway, they're good numbers. So, so let's go back to the checklist here. And so we're ready to eat it on. Uh, maybe that rain will bring some more geese down. Did anybody see snow geese today to, yeah. or here? When are we, doing this? we had a, a snow goose right on. Okay, so better get a system going here. Um, enter. Yay! We're up to two. <laughs> uh, Ross's goose? Don't think so. Uh, greater white fronted, yes. Had some reports of greater white fronted. Um, I don't think cackling geese. Did anybody hear or see any calculator? I know there's some down in Avila, uh, but at the golf course down in Avila, but not, not here. I wish we could extend our circle down to Avila because there's really good birds down there, but, but then we'd lose, then we lose Morro Bay, you know, so. Good birds on the quest of we'll get to that. <laughs> Canada geese, of course. Um, I didn't hear of any wood duck. Anybody hear of uh, wood duck being seen today? Uh, um, I don't know where they got up. Usually, uh, Ron Rupert will find some in little ponds up like San Bernardo Creek Road, but I don't, I don't know where they got Ron's list today, complete list. But anyway, we'll have to take a pass on that. Blue wing, teal, of course, cinnamon teal, and a little preview to the rare birds at the bottom of the list. We have a hybrid uh, blue wing cinnamon teal. It's been at Sweet Springs. Uh, for several weeks, and it was present today as well. Yeah, so uh, that's that's a pretty cool looking bird. Got a nice paint job on it. Uh, Northern shoveler, yes, of course. Uh, gadwall, yeah. Um, Jim Royer saw some gadwall today off the uh, marina boardwalk, and uh, he did get Eurasian widgeon as well. There was a, a male Eurasian that's been out there for some time. The females are kind of difficult to tell at a distance. So usually where there's a male, is this right, Curtis? Where there's a male, sometimes there's, there's a female, they travel in pairs. Uh, no, okay. Something I just made up then, I guess, right? Yeah. But sometimes it's good, you know, to if you want to learn female ducks, if you have the males right next to them, then you can say, oh, well, you know, they're paired up because obviously in, in groups. Unless, yeah. they're making, unless they're busy making hybrids. All right, so that's the Eurasian widgeon, which uh, has a pretty pretty wide distribution, obviously. Um, American widgeon, yes, we have lots and lots of those. Used to be called bald pate. There's a picture of it right next, next to it there. Uh, that's the Eurasian, um, by the way. I just have some photographs next to the list, and I don't really have them labeled, but um, it's just kind of something to look at more interesting than a list. Uh, okay, we're at Mallard, yes. Northern Pintail, yes. Green Wing Teal, correct. And Canvasbacks. 11. You, you saw 11 of them? Yeah. Oh, very nice, where was that? Um, the, uh, the operations on outside of uh, CMC. Oh, okay. That's nice. Yeah, good. So it's great to get Canvasbacks. And Ringneck Ducks. 
also, let's see if I can, oh, I can do that. That's a touch screen. I like this touch screen. Uh, yes, yeah, so we had, we had ring neck ducks, I think as well. I think um, at least, we had them. you had them too, they yeah. Them. They, they tend to like smaller, smaller ponds and things. Um, greater Scott, it, I don't have Greater on my submitted eBird. I don't know if anybody saw Graders. Uh, but certainly the lesser, okay. So when we come to a category like this greater, greater, lesser um, category, it's like you can't tell based on the, the characteristics with which of the species it is. Uh, we don't, we won't count that as, a, a, as part of our totals because we already have lesser and that's included in the combination category. If we didn't, well, for like example, the Rufus Allen's hummingbird, um, if you got Rufus and Allen's, that would be two, but Rufus Allen's is just counts as one. So anyway, if there's a little blue shaded on, that means that we shouldn't be counting it, I think. Surf scoter, of course. I didn't hear many white winged scoters. So down, I think, at Port St. Louis, they've been seeing some white winged scoters, but so no, scooter spa, bufflehead, yes, of course. Uh, common golden eye, uh, we did have some reports of common golden eye in, in Morro Bay, which is cool. Um, oh, hooded merganser, you know, I think we got those. Uh, I've, I saw one out there during count week, but I don't think I asked Jim and he said he didn't see him today. So um, it's just one of those things, you know, you hope that you get everything that's been seen recently, but it doesn't always work that way. So I think for time being anyway, hooded's uh, not on the list. Common, certainly not. Uh, red breasted, yes. <clears throat> and lots and lots of ruddy ducks out there. Okay, so quail, my nemesis. <laughs> I went up onto the, the, the Cuesta Ridge this morning, gorgeous conditions, hardly any wind, and it was just gorgeous up there. Pretty warm actually too, because normally it's like pretty cold, but um, and it was very quiet. It's too quiet, because I tried to tape up a mountain quail with different calls and that sort of thing. And I didn't get any responses. So I was up there on Wednesday to do a pre-count and I actually did um, hear, hear some. And so we have them for count week, but again, that's one of those species that we don't have for the count day. I did see the, the wrong kind of quail, although which is the California, <laughs> but I like California quail too. This was a picture of what the mountain quail looked like. If you ever see them, they're really, they're a little bit larger and they're quite nicely plumaged. Uh, say California. Um, the other area leaders will. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm, yes. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yes. Let's see. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Wild turkey. Yes. Um, I saw quite a few of those over off of Quintana Road. Those are increasing and have increased a lot, yeah. right? They're almost a nuisance proportions according to some people. Okay, down to the grebes, pied bill grebe, yes. Horned, we had horned grebe on the list. Um, eared, yes. Western, yes. Hmm. Well, it says one Western grebe on all those lists. <laughs> you think there'd be more than one Western grieve out there? So. You would think so. This is an incomplete list, of course. So we're, so we're maybe there were two. Maybe there were two. <laughs> uh, so that would not bode well for the Clarks then, uh, because Clarks is usually less abundant than the Westerns. We'll have to look into that. There was half of one. Of them. Good. You had a Clarks. <laughs> oh, okay, great. So, all right. So we did have a Clark's. Okay, two, two Clark's and one Western. So I don't know. Well, yeah, that does that. That's a that broke broke the rule right there. So 
Okay. Um, Curtis, you must have seen, since you walked like 15 miles downtown, you must have seen some rock pigeons today. I had one flock of 20 and that was it. Oh, okay. I almost missed pigeons and I missed morning bells altogether. Huh. Well, bantail pigeons, they're. I didn't have that either. Yeah, not down there, but I didn't. Do we have that? Yes, well, wait, I have that on the list, but they're abundant up in the Irish Hills where there's acorns and um, they can be very abundant. And let's see what else we have now. Eurasian collar dove, of course. Yeah, and then morning dove. Uh, do, do we have a roadrunner today? Anybody? Mm. Okay. Had it for count week, but. Oh, okay. So count week extends three days before today and three days after, uh, you know, whatever day your count is on. And so we do submit just a presence or absence uh, to Audubon indicating that that species was present during that one week period, but we, it wasn't seen on the actual count day. So that's what count week is all about. It's kind of like the constellation prize, you know, it's like, but it is important because it does become part of the Audubon database. Mm -hmm. So um, like my mountain quail, which I missed, by the way. Mm -hmm. White through to Swifts. Yeah. Good, okay. Uh, lots of Annas. Um, oh, Rufus Allens, yes, there's a picture of one right there. And uh, we did have reports of a couple of those. Heather, you had one, nice. Reporting okay, day. and I think uh, Karen had one as, uh, in her neighborhood as well. So they're not, yeah, that's always good to get that. And they're mostly probably Allens. They're just so difficult to tell apart without good photographs. Uh, Virginia Rail, yes. Okay. Very good. And then, yes, yeah, Soros. Yes. Um, good. American Coop, yes. Avocets, that's another one that's really declined quite a bit. Um, and you know, like a lot of shorebirds, they have a lot of a lot of stressors that they have to go through during migration and land use changes, uh, you know, water quality, all these kinds of things uh, affect their populations. Avocet is one that I believe has declined quite a bit. And so uh, we didn't. How many did we get today? Uh, we only have six on the list here, but there haven't been that many in Morro Bay um, lately. So anyway, give them a check mark for now. Uh, black oyster catcher, yeah, sure, out at the out on the bluffs. Black belly plover, of course. And Dan, you got snowies out on the sand spit. Almost ninety. Almost ninety. Okay, great. And semi palmated. Yep. Kill deer, yeah. The panic birds. I I birded a cemetery, Lissos a cemetery this afternoon for about an hour, and there there were about forty kill deer out there. But they're used to cars driving around there, so and even the lawnmower, they don't even move for the lawnmower, which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> but if you got out of your car and like walk towards them, they'd ah, they freak out. <laughs> I think Marlon Harms call them the panic birds because they're the first ones to like scare everything else away, right? <laughs> uh, Wim Wimbrel, uh, do you have Wimbrel out there? Okay, good. And of course, long billed curlew is a picture of one. And we had that uh, radio tagged um, curlew that was uh, dozer. Dozer, dozer. Yeah, yeah. and Idaho. it was from Idaho, and he, he's been coming back here. Oh. Uh, for like three years or something like that, yes. at least. Yeah. yeah, which is really, really cool. Yeah, they're they're large. I mean, they're grassland in, her, in the in the Great Basin and <coughs> they eat grasshoppers. And not only do they use their long, cool bill to like get sand crabs, but they eat earthworms and pick grasshoppers and all sorts of stuff. So the dozer's mate goes down. South. Right, okay, dozers. Each other. We're going to separate now. Yes, that's that's <laughs> right. The female, after they mate, they the female goes south down to Baja, and dozer comes over here to vacation in Morro Bay, <laughs> and, and then they meet up yeah. again. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, 
Um, where is my cursor? Um, marbled God, wait, yes, of course. Uh, do we see any ready turnstones um, on the beach today, Dan? No ready turnstones. Lots of black turn, oh, did we see black turnstones? Okay, yeah, should get those over by Mora Rock. And red knot, yes, uh, Jim Royer reported those. And surf birds, a couple surf birds, okay, oops. Does it, it doesn't really matter. You don't you don't get extra points for having two for having two X's, but I guess I should just put put one. Sorry. Oops. Uh Sanderling, yes. Dunlins, yes. Lee Sandpipers, yes. Western, there's always westerns too. Not as many as the least. Oh, see, this is what happens when I use my fingers. Sorry. Yeah, I should. Technical difficulties, sorry. Uh, mm. Short build and long build voucher, both of those were called on the list. Uh, Wilson snipe, there's a picture of one there that just such cool looking birds. Mm. Yeah. But yes, there were several, several of those seen. Uh, spotted sandpiper, yes, there were a couple there. And wandering tattler, yes. And greater yellow legs, usually announcing themselves by their call. And willets, of course. Okay, so out on the open ocean, um, did we have common mirror? I think I saw that uh, someone called in the call on common mirror. Maybe Greg saw it out there at Point Bouchon or Tom. Okay. Um, okay. So yes, common mirror. And here it is in its winter plumage. And its breeding plumage, it's like the head's all black and the, and the neck, they're really sleek looking birds. Um, Casson's auklet. I think Greg said that he took a photo of a very distant auklet that he thought might have been a Casson's auklet. Um, Oh, okay. And I didn't hear back from him. So I don't know what it was, Auckland Spa. And I, were there any rhinos that were called? Mm, I guess I don't see any. So. Tom and I saw one yesterday. Oh, uh, yeah, not, not of that, but there have been some ancient murlets yeah. off there as well. And I didn't hear any reports of the ancient murlet today. We're going to try to. Yeah, so that's one of those things that had been seen on and off pretty regularly, but you know, it didn't show up today on count day. So anyway, um, no kitty wakes, uh, Bonaparte skull, yes. Okay, here's a fun fact I was reading about. Bonaparte skull is the only gull that mostly nests in trees oh, up in boreal forests. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so amaze your friends with that yeah. fact information. <laughs> Hermans, yes. Uh, short bill, formerly the mew gull, yes. Ring bill, yes. Western, only gull that breeds here in Slow County. Well, with any, may, maybe there's some other records of Hermans. Maybe. Uh, oops, whatever. Um, Yes, and California, yes, herring. Yes, we did have one report of a, of a herring gull. Thayer's, I think we get for count week, but I didn't hear of any reports for count day today. Uh, but we did have glaucus wing. So we did pretty good on the gulls. Uh, Caspian turn, yes. Forsters, yes. Royal, yes. Is C7 on the submitted eBird lists. So, oops, I keep doing that. Stop doing that. Sorry. I'm trying to, I think when I have the box highlighted and then I scroll, it, it, dra it drags it. So, I don't want to do that. Uh, red throated loon. Um, I don't see that on the submitted eBird list. Did you have red throated loons? Yeah. Okay, good. And uh, Pacific. Uh, yeah. 
Yes. Um, in common, of course. No full Mars, no shear waters. Such a calm day. It's not a very good day for shear waters out on the ocean when it's like super calm. Is that correct or not? Don't they like the wind blowing? They fly more. They fly more. Yeah, you're right. But I don't think we had any uh, sightings of that or the black planet today. Okay, down to the quorums. Um, Brant's quorum run, lots of Brant's out there. Pelagic, yes, here's a photo of a pelagic quorum run that Herb Elliott took. Really nice photo of uh, that glossy plumage that the pelagics have. And Herb had other plants. I think he's in Hawaii now. So this is an excuse for not being part of the count, but he's, he's participated in our CBC many, many times. And uh, so maybe next year. Double crested, yes. Uh, American white pelicans, yes. I have a count of 200, 211 on submitted lists. What? It's, hey, yeah. That, that would be a little flag you because see the same flock of fifty from eight different places. Exactly. <laughs> so, so this is what I do: is after I go through the list and say, you know, you see a, a number like that, and it's like everybody who was counting around the bay is like, oh, I'm going to put American white pelicans in there. So, I have to go back and, you know, between us, we figure out well, what's a reasonable number. It's usually based on the single highest count. So, osprey is another one because osprey fly all over the place. So. We'll, we'll see, but there's only four here. Same. Ideally. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, brown pelican, yes. Uh, no American bittern. Great blue heron, of course. Great egret, yes. And the snowy egret, yes. Uh, how about green herons? The green herons out there, anybody see green heron? No, usually you pick them up over at Cal Poly. Huh, okay, well, or Laguna Lake. No? No? Hmm. Okay. Black crown night heron, yes. Oops, there he goes again. There he goes again. Um, okay, and let's get down to turkey vultures. Lots of turkey vultures flying around. <laughs> Osprey, yes. And then, of course, the white-tailed kites, and Bill reported a large number of them just right over here across the street Meadow and Park. Meadow Park. Yeah. How many did you estimate today? 36. 36. Last night, over 40. Hmm. Yeah. If you have the opportunity to come and check it out, that'd be a pretty cool thing to see. I think I'll come back, check it out. OK, so white-tailed kite, yes. Golden Eagle, probably, yes. Golden Eagle, okay. Uh, Northern Harrier, yes. Uh, Sharp Shen, I had at least one of those. Coopers, okay. And Bald Eagle, um, there were a couple adults out in the bay. Um, that used to be a really hard bird. It was, it was only in the last uh, maybe 15 years or so they started showing up, maybe even 10. Like the last five. Five or 10, yeah. There's a pair that's been um, coming back to Morro Bay. So they're always really cool to see. Okay, red tail hawks. Yes. <laughs> and Ferugis. Anybody hear about Ferugis hawk today? Mm -hmm. Okay. How about Barn Owl? Barn Owl? Nobody. We didn't have any. We didn't. Have, yeah, that's right, Curtis. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have a stake. We used to have a stake out uh, over at Cuesta College, uh, one of the palm trees there, the, the barn owl. Would... Okay. At farm supply. Oh, hmm. Well, we didn't get it. Sometimes you see them early morning, just when you're driving, they'll swoop down. But okay. Western Screech. No, okay, Dean was saying that places they normally would see them, didn't see them this time around, right? Hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, our dedicated owl person for the last few years, Bill Haas, is not able to make the count either. So 
Um, but we might have some reports that we don't know about that are that will come in later. So northern pygmy owl, probably the same. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, burrowing owl, yes, we had uh, two or three reports of burrowing owls, especially at the rock, the long, long running. How many uh, years or whatever has uh, been Bob that the the, the, the burrowing owl been there? Um, this is fourth year. Coming back in the winter time for fourth year. Uh, last year he stayed for five months. That's really cool. So, huh. And he's been here since October 17th. Okay. We're hoping that he stays for the first time. So uh, Maggie had a short-eared owl um, a couple of mornings ago, but I don't know where she got that on the count. Uh, I don't see it on the submitted lists here. Um, that's been kind of a. And I've been on it tonight. Oh, did, were you you were over there tonight? Yeah. Okay. There was one around, but it was late, and there's not that many of them. So, and northern saw wet. <clears throat> well, belted kingfisher. Okay. Oops. Quiz. Picture male or female. Yeah. Good. You guys are really sharp. <laughs> It's a little different, right? Usually the males are the showier ones and then the females of the kingfisher have the belt, the, the brown belt on there. Uh, Red-breasted sapsucker, yes. Um, acorn woodpeckers, of course. Nuttles, yes. Downy, I don't see it. Oh, there's eight on there. Oops, yeah. And Harry, yes. Uh, Northern flicker, all different varieties. There were no yellow shafted or intermediates called today. Often in the wintertime, we'll get an occasional um, mix or a, a yellow shafted, but um, I don't think any of those were called. American kestrel, yes. Merlin, yeah, I saw one Merlin at least. And there's one here too, so maybe there's one on the bay. And of course, our peregrine falcons at the rock and elsewhere. And prairie was also, okay, we had a prairie falcon, nice. We're up over 100, look, we're at 107, whoa. Black Phoebe, lots of those, lots of sage Phoebes. Cassin's kingbird is another species that was uh, historically not really here very much. And then uh, recent years, it's here year round. So quite a few, uh, 15 on the count there. Hutton's Vireo, yes. Loggerhead Shrike, yeah. a photo of a Loggerhead Shrike, nice. Turie Road. Road, okay. Okay, Stellar's J. Yes. All right, thank you. And scrub J, like those J's, just partial to them. <laughs> uh, I didn't get a yellow bill. Oh, here we go, three yellow billed magpies. Yeah, so that's probably up San Bernardo Creek Road, endemic to California. Uh, American crow, yes. Common raven, yes. Chickadees, titmouse, yes, yes, and. Horned larks, I think we probably picked, I don't see any on the list here, do I? Huh. Uh, usually we're getting those off Turry Road. So we didn't see any today. Didn't see any. Hmm. Well, I can't, I can't mark it down now, but uh, maybe. Uh, tree, so I, I had a tree swallow. Um, and anybody see violet greens? Over Laguna or anything? We don't know. No, um, it's a possibility. And uh, barn swallow. Tom had some uh, over the cliffs out at uh, Spooners, Monte de Oro. Okay, bush tits. Oops. Of course. Rin tits. Of course. Ruby crown kinglet, but not. Golden crowned, I don't think. Nobody, no, not a good year. You know, there were some eruptive species. We're going to 
come to those, but it was a good year for red-breasted nuthatch and uh, pine siskins. They were kind of early, but uh, anyway, I'm going to pass up that. And the red-breasted nuthatch, yes, it's it's a good year for those. Um, I don't see those on this list, but I know you had some bill, didn't you? In the red breast and nut hatch, yeah, yeah. They're they're around. There's more of them this year. Uh, why? Some some species uh, might be dependent on what the like. There's a big snowfall last winter, you know, and so some of their nut nut caches were unavailable, so they migrate. White breasted nut hatch, yes. Uh, blue gray net catcher, yes. Maybe brown creeper is one that we don't always get. No, didn't hear about brown creeper. Bees near Moro Bay State Park before all the trees died. Mm -hmm. uh, did we get a rock wren yeah. somewhere? Yes, good, thank you. And canyon wren? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. There's uh, Coon Creek and Moro Rock are the go to places for the canyon wrens and up Froome Creek as well. House wren, yes. Pacific wren, yes. yeah. Had a couple reports of Pacific wren, a winter, more of a winter visitor, but they breed right up in Big Sur. You know, it's not that. They have bred here. here. Is that right? Probably. 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 Yeah. Uh, yes, marsh wren and Buicks, of course. Lots of starlings. When I was talking about the historical list, I was looking looking through the counts, and I think there was one year. Might have been the 70s where they had 130,000 starlings on the list. <laughs> I have one starling today. Okay. <laughs> uh, thrashers, yes. And mockingbirds, of course. Western bluebirds, uh, did we get any mountain bluebirds? Mountain bluebirds, anybody? So we're going to revisit this list, and once we get everything together, we'll, you know, see if some we can fill in some of these species we're not quite sure about, but uh, uh, there were some reports of mountain bluebirds. I don't know their count week, but at least in the last couple of weeks. Uh, how about buried thrush? Nobody came up with that. Very few and far between. This is not a big year for buried thrush. Hermit thrush, of course. Yeah, they're good. Uh, robins, yeah. American robin, 17. Yeah, good. And we had some cedar wax wings out there at 51 on the list right here. Ooh, the scaly breasted munia. That's one that's kind of expanding. That's our non native, non native, uh, either introduced or escape that's really moving farther, far north in urban areas. And now in San Luis, has been here in pretty good numbers for some time now. Yeah, next year we'll have a twin hose wide eye. Yeah, Swinnow's white eye is a similar kind of a exotic that's expanding its range. And Tom, of all people, Tom Adele had one first county record like uh, last week, I think it was, or earlier this this week at his at his water feature in his backyard. Yeah, first county record. Where does it go? Tom Adele's backyard. <laughs> it's not that nobody else is looking at their feeders or water features, but you know, the birds like, if I want to be counted, I got to go here. <laughs> well, Swinhoe's white eye has really taken over a lot in, in Southern California. So it's kind of a cool looking bird, white eyes, with lime green with a white eye ring. So if you see one in your water feature or something, don't be surprised. Uh, da, 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 da. Sparrow, yes. Pippets, lots of pippets. House bench, yes. Purple finch, a few of those. Um, oh, pine siskins. Good, thank you. Thank you. Um, there's a nice picture of one right there. This was early on, they were coming in in good numbers, but maybe they've declined somewhat over the, over time. Legos, yes. Lesser gold finch, that is. And Americans. Mm -hmm. Lark sparrows. Yep. I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, good. It's not, I don't see, yeah. I don't see them on the submitted, submitted eBird list. Yeah. 
149. Fox sparrows, yeah. yes. And dark-eyed juncos, yes. No slate colored, which is another group of more of the Eastern group of the dark-eyed juncos. We often get uh, one or two of them here in the wintertime, but I haven't heard any reports. So, uh, but that wouldn't count anyway, because it's not a separate species. It's part of the dark-eyed junco complex. White-throated sparrows, just before I left to come here, I looked out in my backyard and there was one out there. Oh, <laughs> Yay, mm. but other people reported them today too. Um, lots of white crowns, lots of golden crowns. Ooh, there's another one, my nemesis bird is the bell sparrow. I was looking for one of those up on the ridge today and- Did you get anything up there? You know, <laughs> if you wanna if you want to look at wren tits, I'll tell you where to go, right up there. there they were mobbing me almost. I think after going to Hawaii, that's your herb tips to go up there next year. You should go up there, Curtis. Oh, I don't go up there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no way I go up there. <laughs> it's always an adventure. And when you go up there, it's like such an it, it's such a different habitat. You're always expecting something, you know, like a, I don't know, like a pterodactyl or Clark's yeah. Nutcracker. Well, you get chickens, yeah. so there you go. Clark's nutcracker or some kind of uh, uh, more unusual bird you know towns in solitaire or something like that did you but, get those today oh moving on savannah <laughs> savannah sparrows yes song course lincoln's yeah lincoln's are around uh oh we did get a swamp sparrow down in uh, uh morrow creek so it's been there a while swamp sparrow there's a picture of one right there no is that white that's a swamp sparrow yeah very colorful little guy Caltohes, yes. Rufus crowned, yes. And spotted. Okay. Western meadowlark, yes. Lots of red wing backwards. And then tricolored. You, what were you saying, Carrie, about there are a lot of them? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Okay. How many of the lot? Oh, Curtis. I don't have those back in my pictures. Ballpark. Yeah, at least 30. Okay. Yeah, nice. Uh, yeah. And brown headed cowbirds, brewers, blackbird, yes. And here's a picture of great tail grackles. Someone probably, yes, we had 24 uh, listed here. Yeah, Costco. They used to hang out at Costco parking lots. The great, great tail grackle. They're a pretty magnificent bird. The, the, the males are about twice the size of the females, but. When they, well, those are really birds, blackbirds. When you eat the Costco pizza, they get bigger. <laughs> they probably. <laughs> yeah, they eat the Costco pizza and they get bigger. <laughs> supposedly. It's a theory. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, let's get to some warblers. Orange crown, of course, yeah. uh, they're around now. Common yellow throat, yeah. yellow rumps, a plenty. And then when we go through our. Um, our checklists, some people will identify them as either the Myrtle or Audubon subspecies, or not subspecies, but I guess yeah, races, no, they're group. official subspecies, okay. They're groups, there's multiple. Groups, species. yeah. But no, we just count the one yellow rump. And then uh, Townsend's warbler, yes. Um, Hermit is one that we have on this list, but they're pretty rare. And I don't didn't hear of any hermits that were that were seen today. Uh, we did have Wilsons though. I did see one Wilsons. I know um, some other, uh, at least another one was reported. So you have two here. And one was on the Bob Jones Trail. Oh, that must've been Will uh, up where the uh, wastewater treatment plant is. Yes. And um, Lila Kaiser Park in the Morrow Creek. There was a one there and I had one out at the uh, Brandon Ranch out uh, in Los Osos Valley. As far as tanagers go, nope, I think those were missing in action. Okay, so we're up to 173 species, um, which for most counts would be fantastic. Our average is around 199, I think, 198. But we have additional species here that we haven't listed because the field checklist only 
covers the more common species. And so if we see some more unusual ones, then we'll fill those in. So right, uh, the picture uh, to the right there is a tropical kingbird. And there's been a couple of those at Laguna Lake. So uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately, this is small font here. I don't know. I don't want to mess. I don't want to mess with the font size right now. Is that okay? Uh, sorry about that. And uh, so open next by that. Um, do we want to go around like the, I have on this list here a few things, but uh, like palm warbler, uh, there were a couple of those seen, right? Um, just wondering if there's some more systematic way to, to do this, or we can just like go around, maybe in your areas. Steve, do you have some particular species that uh, you want to yeah. Uh, let's see. Let, let's do. What did I just say? Palm warbler. Okay. Yeah, there was uh, one in sector one. Uh, Patron Jack had one out there today. Okay. Uh, Steve Tillman just said that there was one in sector one. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> and um, okay. Uh, Tennessee warbler. Tennessee. Okay. Oh, see, look, it's all different sizes yeah. here. Isn't that fun? Yeah, it'll, it'll make it small. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it really likes Tennessee warbler. Yeah. <laughs> Black and white warbler. Okay. Uh, Black and white warbler. Great. It's a good one. Can we keep going through the sure. um, common four well? Oh, oh, cool. It was, yeah, it was pretty, uh, pretty warm, pretty warm morning. I guess it's uh, some places. This morning when they went out, the boat license. So, so at Laguna Lake, I guess it was calling it Laguna. Oh, okay. at Laguna Lake. Okay. Uh, yeah, early. Very distinctive um, call. Okay. Will that was my list today. Um, okay, keep Bullock, talking. Bullocks Oreo. Bullocks, okay. Oh, that was Will again. And yellow bowed sap supper. Did you find that? Yeah. Right on. Because that hadn't been that that's because I wasn't gonna deal with it. Well, yeah, there are some subtleties in the sap suckers, especially between the red naped and yellow bellied, and they do they do hybridize. So there's characteristics that will identify it as one species or the other, but if they're not just right, then you have to do this last category. But anyway, um, let's see what what else. Um, we missed the green-tailed towhee that was out at um, Lila Kaiser Park in Morro Bay. It had been there on and off for like a few weeks actually, but it's a very, very... Okay, it's maybe it's maybe been there a couple months on and off, but it's very skittish and Sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. So that was one of those. Uh, let's see what else. We have Tennessee Warbler. Um, oh, the yellow crown night herons out at uh, the Tideland, Tidelands Park. Tom counted four of them today. It was like a first county record only like, you know, several years ago. Now they seem to be coming back more regularly, but four of them is pretty exceptional. The, it's the first time it's ever been in the uh, that should be a night dash, Aaron. 
And uh, any, what else out of the ordinary? Marbled uh, Yeah, that would, yeah, marbled murrelet. Because Tom had some of those out there. Okay. Yeah, we can't. Um, we had uh, yellow headed blackbird. Oh, very good. That's always a nice one to get. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, chime in. Oh, this is big. It is a mythical place. We had all these three birds. We can't go there. <laughs> this was in this was in a, a private access or restricted access area. It's the same. It's like where we saw all the kids today. <laughs> there were four. Uh, Steve Tillman, do you, can you uh, recall any um, species that needs to be added to the list? More of a rare rare species. We already included the greater white fronted geese, correct? Yes, greater white fronted was on the. The main list. That's probably the rarest one that there's a few of the checklists that have come in uh, electronically. I haven't seen, but right, uh, right. Oh, uh, clay colored sparrow. We Did we got it already? Yeah, oh, there it is right there. It's a good way to increase your total. I'm, yeah, just <laughs> spell it differently. Um, hmm. Well, as you can see, we're well short of 199. So there's some species that were tweeners, some that we missed. Yes. Ibis. Ibis. White faced ibis? Yeah, one. Oh, okay. The mythical pond. We had a white faced ibis. That's a good that's a good bird. I swear I have pictures of everything too. Curtis is gonna ask, well, how did you know it was not a glossy ibis? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a good one. You need some background music like uh, Jeopardy or something like that. Yeah. Make us go up to Sea Canyon tonight and listen. Well, you see, yeah. If we had someone dedicated to doing owls, we really didn't get the the uh, owl list like we normally would. So they're probably maybe up to four or five species of owls that we could possibly get, but we didn't, so. those last few birds? It's the person that tells the compiler that I should do it that has to go get them. So in any, in any case, the, the, uh, the tentative species count yeah. for our um, circle is 185. And, uh, you know, that's a really good count for most circles, but uh, a little below normal for ours. But uh, like I say, we'll probably add some to that number. So, yeah. So anyway, um, does anybody have any questions or I guess we can kind of put a wrap on that. Bob, is there, are there any questions that have been submitted or anything like that? Uh, not from our side, but if anybody on Zoom would like to submit a question, uh, just raise your hand or else put it in chat. Okay, so Bob is asking if anybody who's all three of the people that are tuned in, if any of those three <laughs> have a question. Seeing none. Well, um, Judy, thank you for organizing the, the meeting. And um, I think it was a su successful count because we had a lot of participants. We had good weather. And uh, yes. 110 or so participants? Yes. How does that relate to other years? Um, last year, we had 123. And sometimes we get fewer. And um, But uh, in most of the, the uh, counts that I've been involved in, there have been over over a hundred people. So, yeah.